before my birthday, the very hospital that I was born in, Al Shifa uh, Al Ahli Baptist Hospital, was bombed by the Israeli occupation forces, and 500 people who were seeking refuge were killed. and they say the barbarity of the 7th of October and then the human catastrophe of the Gaza Strip. This is racism. The barbarity of what's happening in, in, in the Gaza Strip. 17 members of my own family, my beloved relatives, were killed in two F-16 attacks. I didn't take a photo. One of the children was decapitated. Aziz, my beloved pharmacist, relative was cut in half. We collected his body from one side and the other, the other half from the other side. Hatim, a peaceful man, was thrown out of his diet. His brother's son, Misho, was, was thrown in the back. Children are being killed. If Richie Sunak doesn't care that six Palestinian children are killed per hour, four women are killed per hour, and that and they're stopping the calls for ceasefire, then they are part of this crime. They are definitely part of this crime. And not the other part. So you should tell the state. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Kids, mothers are burying their children. They started writing their names on their bodies so that if they die, they will be able to identify them. How can people live like this? How can we sit here and condone this genocide and these disgusting war crimes? The use of white phosphorus, cutting off humanitarian aid, targeting residential buildings, hospitals, mosques, schools, refugee camps, universities. How does the world sit idle? We watch the IDF lie about the bombing of hospitals, killing 400 innocents. We watch the IDF shoot 23 year old Fahad for throwing a stone at them. We watch them destroy our beloved Gaza. I spent nights in houses where children I befriended would scream in their sleep for their mother, thinking that they had been killed until we wake them up. I've met close friends like Mejd al Juju, who lost 40 of his friends, all martyred in the war, innocents, all around the age of 20, young lives with unfulfilled potential. He traveled to Gaza amongst the bombing just to rescue his cat. I had to leave him um, behind and I think about him every minute, wondering if he is still alive, he is still in Gaza, amongst the rest of my family and friends. Yes, I managed to make it back home, but at what cost? I left my people to continue feeling the damage and terror while I sit home. The guilt is unbearable. People risk their lives just to go to the shop or to fill up water from local tanks. This is not life. I've seen the chaos with my own eyes. Little girls being pulled from under the rubble, faces covered in dust, blood dripping off their face. That was a girl with a dream of having a family or being married. That boy's body you've seen on Instagram, he wanted to be a footballer. He wore the same Ronaldo jersey every single day because that's all his parents could afford. His friends wanted to be doctors, pilots, engineers. They're killing our youth and justifying this. We must hold them accountable. I've seen bodies charred to a crisp, laying on stretchers. Ambulance after ambulance rushing to the scene as people hurry to put the bodies in the back of the ambulance as a hope of saving them. Again, most of them were kids. Yes. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Armistice! When do we want it? up here that you see every week, every month, that you've been seeing for years, are Palestinians. And they are using their energy and their time at this incredible crisis that is personal for many. They are giving their time, their worth, they are generously sharing their stories that we've already heard for us to listen to. Every time you hear the same year, the same number of refugees, the same number of dead children repeated, it is for us. It is in the hope that we will not just listen, not just be sad, that we will understand, that we will be moved, that we will be outraged, that we will be outraged and be moved to act. <laughs> Oh,
when the events happened on October the 7th, the world had a lot of sympathy for the victims in Israel, the people killed and the people kidnapped. But days after that, that sympathy was overshadowed when we started hearing about the atrocities, the massacre carried out in, in Gaza. Thank you. Thank you for the drums. And what's happened since then is that the eye of the world has turned towards Gaza. Make no mistake about that. People throughout this planet of ours are watching those events. And as they watch, they find out a lot more about what has been happening to Palestinians in Israel and Palestine. They learn that Gaza is the biggest open-air prison in the world. And they have been in prison for 56 years. Two or three generations. Just imagine that. They learn of the ethnic cleansing of Palestine in 1948 when over 700,000 people were thrown out of their homes as part of a campaign of genocide and apartheid. They know that every day armed Israeli settlers are attacking with murder villages in the occupied West Bank. They learn of the treatment, the humiliation and the daily persecution of Palestinian people. But we are not staying silent in the face of this. This campaign today is part of a global wide, globally wide campaign to support Gaza and the people of Gaza and the Palestinian people. Make no mistake. And when we say these things, we get accused of being anti-Semitic. That just won't wash anymore. People here are not anti-Semites. They are pro-humanity. In Sheffield, you managed to shame the Labour and Lib Dem councillors in Sheffield to support a ceasefire. But where are where are the MPs? I need everyone here to contact their MP, your MP, and make sure that they vote for a ceasefire. Palestine! 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 Palestine!